So next up, let's talk about scalars and vectors. A scalar is a quantity that only tells you the magnitude, and a vector is a quantity that tells you both the magnitude and the direction. So what does that mean? Well, scalars are what we're mostly used to. For example, 6 miles is a scalar quantity, and 12 meters per second is a scalar quantity. On the other hand, 6 miles north would be a vector, or 12 meters per second to the right would also be a vector. That's because they tell us the magnitude, like 6 miles, as well as a direction, like north. If you take a scalar quantity and add a direction to it, you turn it into a vector. Also, we've mentioned the words distance and displacement. The difference between them is that distance is a scalar and displacement is a vector. And, it turns out, this is the difference between speed and velocity. Let's take a look at the difference between distance and displacement. Here's our friend Mike. If Mike starts here, and he travels 5 meters, where is he now? Well, it's not possible for us to know, because we weren't given a direction. We were given a distance, which is a scalar. Now instead, say we have a compass, and we're told Mike travels 5 meters west. Now we know exactly where he is. Here we were given a displacement, which is a vector, and it includes both the magnitude and the direction. Think of it as taking a distance value and adding on a direction. Here's another important distinction between distance and displacement. Let's say that Mike walks in a full circle with a circumference of 15 meters and ends up right where he started. What is his distance traveled, and what is his total displacement? Well, his distance traveled, which is the actual path that he covered while he was walking, is 15 meters. That's the circumference of his circle, or the length of his path. However, his total displacement during this journey is zero. Why is that? Well, remember our equation for displacement is the difference between the final position and the initial position. And for this journey, Mike started and ended in the same place. So his final position and his initial position are the same, and that gives us that the displacement is zero. Let's look at this another way. Let's say you're driving from your home to your school. There's different paths you could take, but let's say you drove to school like this. The distance you traveled, let's say, is five miles. What would be your displacement? Well, the displacement is the direct difference between your initial and final points, and we can think of it as an arrow going from your starting point to your ending point. So here, our displacement turns out to be 3 miles northwest. Displacement is a vector, so it has both a magnitude, 3 miles, and a direction, northwest. So, here's a question for you. Every car has something called an odometer, which measures the number of miles driven in your car. If we checked the odometer at home, and then checked it again when we got to school, would the odometer increase by 5 miles, or would it increase by 3 miles? So, does the odometer track our distance, or our displacement? The odometer would go up by 5 miles, because it measures distance. It measures the actual path that the car takes. So, that's another way to think about the difference between distance and displacement. Next, we can actually use the same examples to compare speed and velocity. Again, Mike walks in a full circle with a circumference of 15 meters, but now we're given that it takes him 10 seconds. What is his average speed and his average velocity? Well, speed is equal to distance over time, and his distance traveled is 15 meters, and it takes him 10 seconds, so his average speed is 15 divided by 10, or 1.5 meters per second. But velocity uses displacement, not distance. We learned last time that his displacement is 0 meters, since there's no difference between his initial and final position. So Mike's average velocity is 0 meters divided by 10 seconds, or 0 meters per second. 
That seems kind of strange because we know Mike was moving as he walked around the circle. But this is how we define average velocity, and in this case, it's zero. What about our driving example? We already found the distance and displacement of our car. And let's say the trip takes us 12 minutes, which equals 0.2 hours. So what would be our average speed and our average velocity for this trip? Well, speed is distance over time, which would be 5 miles divided by 0.2 hours, and we get 25 miles per hour. So that's our average speed. Next, velocity is displacement over time. So to find the magnitude, we would do 3 miles divided by 0.2 hours, which gives us 15 miles per hour. But velocity is a vector, so we need to include the direction. So our average velocity would be 15 miles per hour northwest. It has the same direction as our displacement. And similar to last time, every car has what we call a speedometer. That's the thing that tells you how fast you're going. Now, does the speedometer tell us the speed or the velocity of the car? Well, the name kind of gives it away, but a speedometer tells us the car's speed. The speedometer only knows we're driving forward, but not which direction we're traveling. However, if your car has a built-in compass, you could think of combining your speed and your compass direction together to give you your car's velocity, which is a vector. 